Yeah, hello and welcome to the A-League Agenda presented by Neds. I'm Daniel Garb. He's Robbie Cornthwaite. We may seem pretty chilled here on the couch, but we're still buzzing after the first week of the finals, aren't we, Robbie? How good was it? Action-packed. Plenty of highlights and plenty of talking points, so it all looks good heading into the second week. Sydney FC make it through. Adelaide make it through. Let's take a look at the finals tree and see what we're set for now that we have reached the semi-finals. Of course, two-legged encounters, and uh, we have got a Sydney FC up against Melbourne City and Adelaide against Central Coast Mariners, which looms as a massive shootout. Let's see how we've got to this stage. The derby was something that we were looking forward to immensely and it did not disappoint. No, it certainly didn't. I mean, the result may be a little bit of a surprise, but when you see the second half performance that Sydney FC put in, I thought they were worthy winners. There was a big moment during that second half, a tackle from Ryan Grant, which really sort of disrupted Western Sydney. Sydney were on top at at that time, but after that tackle, it seemed like it was a calculated thing. Started a little bit of a bust up, which is not always a bad thing. And mm. Sydney go on to score two goals in quick succession. So I think the loss of Tommy uh, Merschler for, for Western Sydney was obviously a key as well. But Sydney far too good in that second half. So the Ryan Grant tackle, I mean, is that experience coming to the fore? A player saying, I need to change something up here to get my team going? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you're always going to see that in the derby. I don't think up until that point we'd had that real uh, spark or that, that moment of fire. And and he provided it. You don't want to see players get injured, obviously, but um, that was something that fired up Sydney FC and, and sort of disrupted Western Sydney. We spoke about Sydney's experience being important. It certainly proved uh, to be a pertinent point in that derby. Adelaide and Wellington, it was all about Craig Goodwin. We sat here and we questioned, could he lift? Could he get back to his best? He did that, the great man. Was there ever any doubt, Garvey? I mean, he's done it on the world stage at the World Cup. He scored a penalty against Peru. He's done it on... Uh, as I say, the world's biggest stage, and he, he turned up again for his side. He's done it in FFA Cup Finals, Australia Cup Finals, um, and he was the man for Adelaide United once again on Friday night at Cooper Stadium. So, again, he hasn't had the best of time against Central Coast Mariners this season, probably a couple of his poorer games, which we'll touch on a little bit later, but the skipper leading by example uh, for the Reds. Let's take a look at the fixtures then for this week and the teams that have been waiting patiently for the semi-finals, they get the second leg at home. So it's Sydney FC hosting Melbourne City on Friday night. Allianz will be rocking Cooper Stadium, always pumps for an Adelaide home game. Never mind a semi-final first leg against the Mariners and then we flip, of course, for the week after. Gosford gets a home final once more and Melbourne City hosts Sydney FC. Uh, these first legs, though, will be so so intriguing and uh, Sydney FC and Melbourne City that experience that we've spoken about with Sydney FC will be important in particular uh, the way in which they've managed to stabilize at the back with Jack Rodwell back fit he makes such an impact doesn't he oh massive impact I thought he was absolutely fantastic uh, on the weekend and uh, you know winning a lot of tackles keeping Brandon Borello relatively quiet almost went missing in the second half Borello I don't think that was through any fault of his own you see his distribution was really good. And what I liked particularly in the second half was he stepped into midfield mm. quite a lot. Luke Bratton dropped in and, and covered for him and he started the play. He pushed up a little bit higher on that right-hand side. He's such a presence, so much experience. And if they can keep him fit, they've got every chance against Melbourne City. I mean, he played in midfield a lot in the Premier League. He, he had a role there for England, of course, and their national team. He's a top-class player. His body fails him at times, but when he's fit... I mean, he's as important as any individual in the A-League, and that might uh, be uh, critical, of course, against the tack of Melbourne City, which is the best in the competition, headlined by another golden boot for Jamie McLaren, of course. And, uh, yep, we're looking forward to watching him in the 18-yard box come finals time again. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously the most successful goal scorer in A-League history. How do you stop him? Well, no one really has been able to. I played against him a couple of times. He was just that one guy that, for some reason, he always managed to get in the blind spot. You couldn't quite see where he was, and you were constantly wondering and worrying where he was. So I think an underrated part of his game is actually how quickly he reacts to situations. A shot on goal, uh, the keeper might make a save, and it parries down, and he's the first to react. You see it here. Defenders standing still, and he's the one that pounces on that loose ball. He loves to score goals, and he just wants to score goals, and he's very, very good at doing it. Arguably the best provider, though, for McLaren in the final few weeks leading into the finals has been Marco Tilio. It's interesting to see how they line up and what they go with over two legs. Obviously, Naboo, um, they've got uh, Matthew Leckie, who's had a tremendous season, obviously missed some games through injury. Tilio as well. Uh, maybe away from home, they go with someone a little bit more robust, like an Andrew Naboot um, and, and a Leckie. And then maybe at home, they opt for Tilio to, to bring that flair and firepower. He scored a couple of great 
Uh, he scored one very good goal, should mm. I say, against Sydney FC this season uh, at home, almost goal of the year. So against his old side, another former Sydney FC player, one they've let go, uh, could come back to bite them. We'll look at that game in a bit more detail when we get to the uh, five-minute primer. But let's take a, a bit of a look at Adelaide and Central Coast now. This looms as a shootout. It could be 10 all on aggregate, Robbie. <laughs> well, I, at the end of the day, there's no away goals anymore, is there? <laughs> so I suppose as long as one of these sides comes away with a win, whether it's 5-4 or 1-0, I think they'd uh, be relatively pleased. I think... The two games that they've played this season, let's be honest, Central Coast Mariners have absolutely destroyed Adelaide United. It was 4-0 at home uh, for the Mariners in Gosford. Obviously, Isaias, when he was having his troubles with uh, red cards, was sent off in that game and uh, Mariners ran away with it. And then in round 26, when it was all still to play for, the Mariners came to Hindmarsh and put four past Adelaide yet again. So uh, be warned, Adelaide. We know what they're capable of. And, and Jason Cummings probably hasn't finished the season as well as, um, you know, he's had a great season, but he hasn't finished off the season yep. all that well. And other guys have been stepping up. They have, and they've got a very selfless attack, which we'll speak about in the primer as well. But they need to keep Craig Goodwin quiet. I love it in sport when the star players lift come finals time, come the big moments. And just when you think they're perhaps off their best, then they step up in a big way. How do Central Coast shut him down? Because you have to put work into him. Well, I think the key is going to be keeping the ball. Obviously, Craig Goodwin can't um, create, can't cause all these problems if Adelaide United don't have the ball and they don't have those opportunities to counter-attack. We know Adelaide down the left-hand side with Ryan Kiddo uh, and Craig Goodwin. That's their danger side. Kiddo's probably got six or seven goals himself. Not so uh, dangerous down the right. So if they can maybe set up their, their team in a way to, to force the ball down the right-hand side as much as possible, I'm not saying they need to go and overload uh, Adelaide United's left-hand side or anything like that. But let's set up and, and let Adelaide play mm. to the right. Maybe Jason Cummings starts on, on the left side at centre half and, and make sure they're playing the ball out through the back onto that right side and keep it away from Craig Goodwin. Josh Nisbet won the Mariners medal despite all the big-name players in Central Coast's attack. He needs to lift now again and, and run the show in midfield because it does seem like there's an opportunity there for, for a key player to stand up on both sides of uh, the equation in this game. Well, you hit the nail on the head when you say run the show because if you look at his stats in terms of tackles, in terms of passes made, into interceptions, he doesn't really feature high up in the in the ladders on any of those statistics, but he is the man that sort of dictates the play for the Central Coast. He's had a tremendous year and he is the barometer. So he's had a couple of really good games against Adelaide. I think Central Coast have won the midfield battle in both of the clashes and uh, he's been a key reason why. Let's get into the five minute primer then. Robbie's going to tell you who wins out of the, uh, the first legs of the semifinals and maybe the uh, semifinals all up and why. Let's start the clock. We'll start with Sydney FC and Melbourne City. The week off firstly, after the derby, after the mental and physical exhaustion of that game, will that be a factor? I think it will be. I think uh, we speak about Sydney FC's experience. They've also got aging legs at the back, but uh, have they already played their grand final, Garby? Because that game against uh, Western Sydney was the biggest derby in A-League history, in derby history. Uh, they put in a tremendous performance. How much have they got left in the tank? We know Melbourne City's had the week off. They've got a young, uh, energetic forward line, front four. Um, it's going to be really difficult for Sydney FC to slow them down. Joe Lolly's been such an important player for Sydney FC as we look at some of uh, Melbourne City's attacking prowess. I want to ask about him in a moment. But the Sydney FC defence, can they keep Melbourne City quiet? They did it against the Wanderers, of course, who were looking really good in attack. But it's a difference... Uh, question altogether when it comes to Melbourne City's front four. Yeah, well, in their two clashes this season, they've obviously got the, the win at home. Uh, Jamie McLaren scoring from the spot and then Sydney FC. There was a couple of um, real scrambles in the in the City penalty area. They weren't able to deal with them. LaFondra grabbed himself a goal. It was a bizarre moment where Tom Glover grabbed the ball with his hands out of the side of the box in that game as well. The danger for Sydney is what happened in the second game this season. Uh, Melbourne City have got the ability to take a game away from a team in the blink of an eye. If they score a couple of goals in really quick succession uh, in the first leg, then you, you really worry about whether the game could be over after the first match and, and the second leg is going to be an uphill battle for them. They've got so many options, Melbourne City. They can start Tilio on the bench. They can start Naboo on the bench. I'm not sure Sydney FC quite has that luxury. So Joe Lolly and that hamstring, do they throw him straight into it from the first leg? Do they save him? How does Steve Corica play it? Well, looking at the moves that they made in the derby, the fact that he came on, they, they grabbed the lead, just a 1-0 lead. The 
the result wasn't beyond doubt by any means and they took him off says to me that he's probably not close to being 100 fit i think in that moment they had to take a big risk chuck him on because their season might have been over but i think now that it's a two-legged game i think he's on the bench if it's a one nil down or two two one down i think you leave him there i think you save him for the second leg unless things are getting out of hand and it's two or three nil which i don't see happening I think Joe Lolly stays on the bench for this game. Quickly in 10 seconds, who takes out the first leg and why? I think the first leg will be a draw. I think it'll be a tight, cagey affair. I think City won't want to show their cards too much away from home. Obviously, they're going to be looking to score across the two games. I think it, it gives the better club, the better side, the advantage. And I would expect City to come out on top. Let's take a look at Adelaide Central Coast because both teams have fantastic attacking groups defensively. There are question marks. Do you see a change in approach from either side in this game? Maybe for the first leg from Adelaide at home or Central Coast at home, or is it just going to be a gung-ho shootout? I don't see Adelaide changing much, to be honest, despite the fact they've had very little fortune against Central Coast. I think they believe they haven't produced their best football whatsoever against the Mariners. And I think they, they believe that if they go out there and show what they're capable of, play to their ability, that they believe they're a better side. Now, Central Coast obviously don't need to change anything. They've had the wood over them. They'll be full of confidence. Eight goals in two games. We've mentioned their, their sort of attack as well. Very, very dangerous. Could be a shootout, but I think it'll be KG at Highmarsh. Jay Barnett, Isaias, and Dorigo started against mm. uh, Wellington. Three defensive midfielders in the middle of the park. Zach Clough should be back, but I think they stick with that more defensive approach in the middle and, and try to stop uh, the passes between the lines. I reckon the best aspect of the Central Coast Mariners is the fact that all of their strikers can take it on when need be, but they're also happy to pass it off in key moments. Cummings, uh, Tulio, uh, Benny Nicololo, Sam Silvera, always happy to take responsibility, but they can look for the better option. How difficult is that for a defensive group when you don't know who is going to take the shot? I mean, we spoke about Cummings and, and his 16 goals this season. Obviously, he's the main marksman, but you really can't focus on one player too much. You mentioned the others are a bit of a support act. They've got probably close to 30 or 40 goals between them as a group. So, I mean, that's a great weapon for Central Coast. As I mentioned, Cummings just two goals in the last six games of the season. They scored eight in their last three. So that just shows to me other players are stepping up. Silvera scored two in the derby. So they're all full of confidence. Adelaide needs to be really careful. In that game against Co at Coopers, uh, Tulio, when he was running at Adelaide's back four, in Cololo as well, uh, they looked like they could score at will. Big night planned in Adelaide. The crowd will be pumping. Can you see the Reds taking an advantage to Gosford? I can. I know it's probably against what a lot of people are thinking. I don't know if there's going to be as many goals as we think. I think it might be a very cagey affair. It's going to be very, very even. And I'm going to go for our man, Nestori Iran Kunda, off the bench to be the difference. He says he wants to lift and provide a big moment in the finals, Iran Kunda. We look forward to that, of course. They are going to be wonderful semi-finals over two legs. First legs of this weekend. We can't wait for them. This has been the A-League Agenda presented by Neds. Thanks so much for your company.